little later, we begin to understand that love is more than just verses on Valentine's and romance in the movies. We begin to know that love is here and now, real and true, the most important thing in our lives. For love is the creator of our favourite memories and the foundation of our fondest dreams. Love is a promise that's always kept, a fortune that can never be spent, a seed that can flourish in even the most unlikely of places. And this radiance never fades, this mysterious and magical joy, this greatest treasure of all, one only known by those who love. his daughter in marriage to Dylan. However, this does not mean that his love and caring for her is also given away. The love between a father and his daughter is one that cannot be measured and can never cease to exist, but it can be shared. And so mindful of these values, I ask you, do you, Robert, give your daughter, Jessica, to the care of Dylan? I do. Family and friends, Jessica and Dylan have also requested that you all be in their circle of love. Say, we do, if you agree to bring Jessica and Dylan to be married to each other. One, two, three. We do! I call upon the persons here present to witness that I, Dylan, Take you, Jessica, to be my lawful wedded wife and life partner. To laugh with you in the good times, to struggle with you in the bad, to solace you when you are downhearted, to wipe your tears with my hands, to comfort you with my body, to mirror you with my soul to share with you all my riches and honours beyond when we both grow old. I call upon the persons here present to witness that I, Jessica, take you, Dylan, to be my lawful wedded husband and life partner, to laugh with you in the good times and to struggle with you in the bad to solace you when you're downhearted, to wipe your tears with my hand, to comfort you with my body, to, mor to mirror you with my soul, to share with you all my riches and honours beyond when we both grow old. With this ring, I make a promise that from this day forward, you shall not walk alone. My heart will be your shelter, and my arms will be your home. With this ring, I make a promise, that from this day forward, you shall not walk alone. My heart will be your shelter, and my arms will be your home. So therefore, by the authority afforded me by the Commonwealth of Australia, I have the greatest pleasure to declare Dylan and Jess to be husband and wife.
Dylan, you may now kiss. and Robert Satara. Ah, good evening, everyone. I'd like you to welcome you all here. Thank you for being here. Um, a very special cousin of mine said once that if you want to get your house straight, have a party. So... <laughs> Um, Pop and Nan, thank you very much for the venue today, because it was beautiful. <sighs> Trying to keep it together. <laughs> you got this. Okay. So, Jess. Wow. You're stunning. A few, a few memories of Jess as a kid. There's a photo if, you're, um, if you've been privy to the photo. It's, a, it's taken at the farm at Scone. Jess is about one and she's holding a carrot. Rita is holding Jessie's hand holding the carrot and Snow the horse is eating the carrot. And it's just uh, very um, character-like of Jess. Right? She's a farm girl. She's always wanted to be a farm girl and she's been one. All right, so I do believe that the first time I met Dylan, he had a little ponytail bun thing. <laughs> and, and, and didn't say nothing, it's all good. You can be who you want to be. But then <laughs> later on, the girls asked me, well, what do you think of Dylan? And I said, well, yeah, he's all right, but um, 
red man bun thing? No, 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 no. Next time I saw Dylan, there was no more man bun. Man, man bun, it was gone. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was the first, all right? And Dylan and I's relationship is a series of firsts. So, first, first man bun I remember ever seeing. <laughs> first man bun I am responsible for getting rid of. Um, uh, oh, so, leaving the farm. Just as I were up there, Dylan came over and met us up there. We were leaving. Dylan was driving either a Mitsubishi L300 van or a Ford Econa van. It was a bomb. And we get to the gate, and I've told him at the house, I will open the gate for you. All right. So I've driven through. I've stopped, opened the gate, driven through. They've driven through, but I haven't left enough room for them to come past me. And I've sidled up to the window, and I've said to Dylan face to face, just be aware that's, that's the most important possession I have sitting in your passenger seat, so drive carefully. Yes, sir, no, sir, three bags, full sir. So great. So we're going to stop it's going to fill up. So they drive off. I shut the gate. I drive off. I meet them up in Scone filling up. And Dylan comes out with, does that mean that Jess is more important than Jodie and Sally? <laughs> I knew then, there and there, he had sort of a kind of sense of humour. It was great. It was good. Cheeky, cheeky kids. Um, Dylan didn't really like drinking beer. Like, what's wrong with that, Dylan? But I coaxed him, he doesn't mind a beer now. So, first beer, or close enough to being first beer. Um, first, okay, so um, Dylan bought his first brand new vehicle while, while courting Jess under our instruction that all the shit boxes that he was driving weren't good enough for my daughter to drive around in. So, yeah, we better put her in a safe vehicle that really she wanted the vehicle, not him. But she got what she wanted and he got what, what he got and wanted. And, um, and everyone's happy, aren't they, Jess? Driving a truck around. Sorry I couldn't give you that Hilux because I had to get rid of that Hilux. Um, first. So Dylan's firsts are... Uh, He's the first boyfriend to walk in the door out of my three daughters. And, um, and here we are today. You've done well. Okay, on a quick note, there was... Um, I've got to read this for word for word. So, Dylan's Bucks was a... Um, <laughs> It was a it was a handful. All right, so we did paintball, all right, and and there was there was a situation arose, all right. But without going into the situation, all I would like to say is that um, I would like to welcome Dylan and his family into ours because I know that they'll have my back in any situation. Cheeky, cheeky kids. Your name, your name was on the gun, be careful. <laughs> Dylan, welcome to our family. Without further ado, I do believe that I would like to raise a toast to Jess and Dylan. To Jess and Dylan. Thank you, Robin Rita. All right, ladies and gentlemen, over to the other side of the room and, of course, the groom's family. Please welcome Dylan Mark I and Katrina, the father and mother of the groom. We first met Dylan back in 1995. He was a bit of a whinger, didn't really say much and he cried a lot. We loved him over, and over time we got to know him and he even became like a son to us. <laughs> when Dylan was at Sunday school, he was very disruptive and loud. We came up with a solution. He stood out the front holding the offering bag, feeling very important, and then he went around collecting the money from all the children. Thinking about it now, this may be where his love of money came from. And to Jess, a bit of advice, if Dylan is ever getting a bit too disruptive, 
or loud, give him a bag and tell him to stand out the front, giving him some pointless jobs to do. It may just shut him up. <laughs> it's fitting that reception is here at the Campbelltown Catholic Club, as I believe that is where Dylan and Jess first met. If you look up the sound box up there, that is where Dylan was when he first saw Jess and she was on stage receiving the award at her graduation. Over near the bar, I think it's over there, is the first place he spoke to her when she was doing her traineeship here at the Catholic Club. They're also over near the desk, not sure where that is, Bill. When um, he asked her out, she said yes, and the rest is history. It's important that as we journey through this life, we try and find someone who matches our passion, matches our efforts, someone who is mentally and emotionally equipped enough to help build us back up in our time of need, someone to share our highs and lows, someone who values and loves us, someone who matches our crazy. We believe that Dylan has found that in Jess. He has found his crazy. We have every belief that, Jess will achieve, that Dylan and Jess will achieve great success in any goals they set in life. They are both hard and dedicated workers and we are sure that with their hard work and dedication they'll be rewarded. Congratulations to you both on the purchase of your own home since the engagement party. I trust this home is the beginning of a large property empire. Well done to you both. And, uh, from this day forward, may all your hopes and dreams come true. Now, everyone, please make sure your glasses are charged and join us in toasting the new Mr. and Mrs. Dylan Hovey. Ladies and gentlemen, for the bride and groom. Bride and groom. Before I get started with my main body, um, can we just take a moment to appreciate how wonderful and amazing and fabulous I look tonight? <laughs> I put in a lot of effort, almost completely dressed myself. Had a bit of help though. Um, Jess, you're looking like actually amazing. Like, incredible. Like, wow. When you walk down the aisle, I think everyone in, of the groomsmen was just like, in tears almost. <laughs> so, um, Dylan, it's nice to see you without a head injury. You know? Um, everyone else, it's uh, good to see you all getting dressed up and coming out to sort of celebrate two people that I care so much about. So, thanks for that. Uh, Mason, you did your best, mate. <laughs> um, so with that out of the way, I'll hurry up and just talk. Um, so to start off, Dylan, I'm super proud to be your friend and I'm super impressed that you managed to find someone like Jess. Uh, she's kind, consider considerate, wonderful person. She has an awesome sense of humour and is willing to genuinely listen, even when I talk bullshit, which is 95% of the time. She tries her best with so much and has things, and has this thing where she has a love and appreciation in her heart for so many of the things around her. Not to mention, I swear, her smile is endless to the point where, honestly, Jess, you should probably get it checked out because it's a bit concerning. But to get serious for a second, after spending the amount of time you have with him, you know just about as much as I do. You know how loyal he is, how if you need him, he'll always try his best to be there, how committed he can be to what he sets his mind to and how much he cares, even if he hates to show it. You know how much of an absolute nerd he is in the best possible way, and how he's more than willing to teach and show you what he knows and what he's learnt. I'm sure you know that after all the spot, sorry, <laughs> I'm sure you know even after all the time spent with him that he still has so much more to offer and I'm sure that that, along with so many other reasons, is why you've chosen to spend so much of your life with him. He's just the best. You've endlessly supported me and made me feel like I'm worth the effort and sometimes I feel like I can never thank you enough for being a part of my life. You're amazing friends amazing people, and you are both amazing together. I've really only just skimmed the surface of, not, of how not only I feel, but I'm sure a lot of people here feel about you guys. And I'm hoping that not only can you be a part of each other's lives for a long time to come, but that I can also be a part of yours for a long time to come as well, because, you know, you're kind of all right. Just one more thing before I go. I almost forgot. Um, to bring, I did bring it up earlier, but I almost forgot to sort of elaborate on it. I'm sure that Jess, you know that Dylan has a terrible habit of hitting his head. Um, like, it's really bad, kind of a pandemic. I mean, what, there was the Joan where you got knocked out by the shackle that fell from the rafters. 
There was the time you hit your head on the van, the time you ran into the wind shop, the time like a week ago where some random dude decided to punch you during paintball. <laughs> the time when you came back from putting lights away on Australia Day with a massive gash on your head, blood running down your face and absolutely no memory of what on earth had happened and you decided that it was okay for you to drive two hours home to, from Campbelltown to Emi Plains only to arrive, jump out of the van and vomit everywhere. And of course, there was also that time that you got crushed by two 103 kilogram speakers when some random guy sort of came in and saved you at the last second. And I don't know who that guy was, but I'm sure he was extremely handsome. <laughs> anyway, in order to help to protect you and your new married life, don't worry, I've got your back. I got you guys a small gift to open. It's currently sitting under the table where I was sitting. And I want you to get it out and uh, show everyone for us. <laughs> anyway, I love you too, and thanks for listening, everyone. Cheers to these two guys. On behalf of all the bridesmaids, we've made a PowerPoint presentation for all of you to watch. Let's say the things that we both know Gonna take these words and make them stone I know a place on the edge of town The whiskey and the wind are the only Let's make like a tree, grow some roots, do all the things that old folks do. Someone to lie with, rely on to fly with, want to drive all night and head out west, get lost in Montana, find the Santa Ana. If we're going nowhere, we're going nowhere fast. Hard times come. 
hard times pass I'll be there when the sky turns black I need you when you need me What else more could someone need? You've got a key and I've got a lock Let's build a house upon a rock Let's build a house upon a So, as you know, I'm Dylan, and if you don't, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> um, yeah, for those who have given me uh, the, the speeches before, you know, thank you for your kind words, and thanks for the girls for putting that together. It was um, it's a lot of memories. And... It wouldn't be much of a speed if I didn't thank my now, I can actually say it, my beautiful wife, Jess. What can I say? I, I did not think you could look so amazing, but you never cease to blow, blow me away. And once again, you've taken my breath away. I was bawling my eyes out at the end of the aisle. So are the other three. Oh, I am. <laughs> and every day you take my breath away. I can't wait to spend the rest of our lives together. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to raise a toast to my beautiful wife, Jess. To Jess. They said, son, let me tell you a story. When I was young, I had dreams of glory. All oh, these mistakes seem to come like. Blood. Until my days, my days, they were done But I don't want to feel like wishful thinking Pick myself up and move to the beat of my heart and my soul Sing a song for the dreamer Like the 